is we love when customers say, oh, just make me a kielbasa. Oh, right. Right? And so there's a language barrier because we're like, really? Are you like Polish? Like, yeah. did your grandmother make kielbasa? Oh, great. Now we have to match what she did. Uh-huh. Or is it just because like you're American and mm-hmm. like there's an American kielbasa now mm-hmm. that you can get from your local uh, slaughterman and yeah. it just mean, means something that's linked. That's and right. That's it. So, what do you mean by kobas? I mean, here we get all we like. Okay, just make me a merguez. Just make me a yeah. You know, and it's like this. There is no. There needs to be a. Um, if we had time, you know, we need to become the linguistic authority on what these terms mean, especially in America, because we are this culture that's brought in all these other cultures. Mm-hmm. And what does everything mean now? Yeah. That's, that's that's something that's we've kind of stumbled uh, around in, and yeah. if you're another processor, you probably know what I mean. But um, I don't know; it's something to kind of research a little. Yeah, that was funny <clears throat> too, especially because um, gosh, our index is so useless. <laughs> uh, be, uh, so what book is that? So this is what I was going to mention with a lot of these things. The funny terminology, uh-huh. because it, it was so interesting that that particular customer want, this was years ago, but it's been reiterated over and over again. They said, just uh, just make a kolbasa. And I'm like, oh, okay, smoked, has bacon in it, Polish, which region? Like, what yeah. is she talking about? <laughs> and just linked, not bulk. That's, That's what kolbasa meant. meant to her, mm-hmm. which in in sort of an, like an ironic way is kind of what kolbasa means. Okay. <laughs> It's sausage. Yeah. Just means sausage. Okay. Uh, In Polish. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like a Krakow, Krakow sausage. Oh. It's a sausage from Krakow. And if you want, a, spe- a particularly for Central European, Eastern European um, sausage styles, if you want a, there is actually an authoritative list of them with attendant definitions and they are historically authentic Mm. and it is the result of the soviet union Mm -hmm. the party members you know wanted to flatten all cultures and destroy polish identity except for their sausage (laughs) because it tasted real good Uh and so they actually got government backing behind um retaining all of the Official sausage recipes. Yeah, and I was gonna look it up online, but I can't. I can't really remember. They these guys have a website. I think it's called Withywindle. Good luck spelling that one. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Withywindle.com. But uh-huh. at the very least, the guys that curate that list and it is extensive online uh-huh. are Stanley Mariansky and Adam Mariansky. Uh huh. And they have produced this wonderful tome in 2010. And it's called The Home Production of Quality Meats and Sausages, right here. And what I think is cool about this is if you want a, like a Polish meat cookbook, this is it right here. Um, It doesn't say that in the title, but that's what this is. Yeah. And it is all these uh, Eastern, Central European, some Northern European, German, authentic recipes for old school stuff. Now, it's all nitrate and nitrite. But they, they divulge enough information for you to excavate how things were done before we had the luxury of using synthetic nitrite, uh-huh. which is recent. Before, I think, the 1920s, we were all limited to the use of saltpeter for mm-hmm. any nitrate at all. And even then, it was only nitrate, which had to be nursed through the skill of the curer into nitrite mm. to even have any notable effect at all. Mm. So... Um, Anyway, it's, it's an amazing tome, and they define a lot of those types. Unfortunately, it is produced by Book Magic LLC, which I think means it's just produced by them. And <laughs> it's what it sounds like. Let's just say they didn't <clears throat> have much of an editor, but I still yeah. love it. I mean, I go to this all the time. There's so, the, inf- the sheer quantity of, of information is incredible. The index is um, consummately useless. And so is the table of contents. I've had a number of self-published so, books. That I, yeah, I want to it's okay. You just find yourself mm-hmm. going through, you know, a lot of this stuff, and it's really fun. Um, 
trying to find examples of, they have Russian sausage, Polish sausage, Hungarian sausage. They have Polish government recipes for making traditional salami. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So they the have, Polish government, what, they they just, um, what's it called when you pay for something to happen? <laughs> yeah, they've um, sponsored, they've right. funded. Yeah. I mean. A, a, a national yeah. sausage, like registry almost. I think something. those are nice ways to say what the Soviet Union did sure. to the Polish sausage, but. Yeah, they, they wanted it to be like Landjäger. It's a sausage similar to Austrian Kantwurst, okay. as both sausages are flattened during fermentation, which gives them a rectangular shape. Did you know that Landjäger was traditionally flattened? <laughs> it's super interesting. Uh -huh. um, yeah, lots of really interesting stuff. He's got a whole section on kielbasa, naturally you have to flip through all oh my gosh, you can't just 700 pages to find it uh, <laughs> because it's not in the index. <laughs> but, oh, we didn't even talk about andouille sausage. No, I know. Our smoked no, sausage. Oh, I geez. mean, you just did. We could do a whole other episode. Maybe we will. Um, but smoked sausage, you just did a batch with our pigs. Yeah. And you added the nitrate, a little titch of nitrate, like mm -hmm. a way reduced version. And it was... It's the first time I've ever used cure number one in my life. That's right. And then what it was the first thing I told you? I don't know. After you did it, I was like, can you stop using this? <laughs> and you were like, what do you mean? I just did it once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, sorry. It, it, it had this like feeling of, I'm tired of this already. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it was actually very instructive because I talk a lot about nitrite, but I've never used it, which is, <laughs> yeah. you know, that could be considered brazen. Uh-huh. Uh, but... It was interesting. It solidified in my mind. Actually, what I've always said about it is that it indubitably affects the flavor decisively, hugely. Yeah. And uh, the thing that it adds is not sourness. That only comes from acid, which can come from bacteria or like a direct additive of ascorbic acid or something. Uh -huh. It adds tang. Yeah. And the tang is distinct from sour, big time. It's a tangy thing. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it, at, at like, uh, if it were to go too far, if it were to be amplified beyond tolerability, it would be metallic. Uh -huh. It's a metallic tang. If you smell the Cure Number One bottle, you're like, whoa, tinny chlorine yeah. type of tang. And in small amounts, it's I think it it's okay, but it is best accompanied by sourness. Mm -hmm. and, 